Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Um, I got a little box through the post yesterday, which I've been waiting for for some time now. Um, I've not opened it yet, so we'll have a look and see what we've got inside. Um, I don't know if you know or seen my other videos. I'm, I've got into these uh, auto gyros. I've got uh, a Robbie Whopper, which is a great name because it goes wop, 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 wop when you're flying it, which is quite a big, heavy IC model but flies absolutely perfect, but you need a bit of space. I've also got the Hobby King G Super G, S Super G, uh, which is, uh, an, again, another big um, auto gyro that seems to come and go fairly quickly. Um, but actually, uh, I made my own blaze for it, because the standard blaze, uh, I might have one here, let's see. Oh, I haven't actually got, these are off another auto gyro. But if you can see these, the, these are off a, a Durafly, which I've got a smaller Durafly um, auto gyro, which I've got flying really nice now. But the G Super G blades are a lot longer, but it's a, exactly the same design. So you've got like a hard plastic along here, right? And this is just like a foam covered plastic. It breaks really, really easy. It's, it's terrible stuff. So what I did on the Super G, I cut all the foam out and dug it out and I made myself a set of um, balsa blades and then covered them with a uh, vinyl wrap. And they actually work so much nicer that I'm gonna make a set for the Jura flight. Um, but in the meantime, I was uh, browsing online and looking and I see on YouTube, I, I saw a guy or a very, quite a small auto gyro, which I'm looking for because our field is getting smaller and smaller. What with the archery and the football on all the time, it, I think the days of the big IC planes that like I used to fly around, uh, it's not safe enough to fly over there, I, I don't think. But um, So I'm cutting down on my IC, my planes. Uh, I've got a few electric 3D planes, stuff like that, which uh, I do a little... Uh, field and I've also got lots as you know loads of helicopters I've got them all hanging up in front of me here but anyway while I was looking at uh, YouTube I saw this lovely little auto drive flying, flying around off a beach and I thought uh, that's a lovely little thing because Hobby King also made one I think called the AC10 which was a really nice thing but that got discontinued straight away and you'll never find one of them for love nor money but I found this little one um, and it looked quite scale, you know, as a pusher prop and stuff like that. So I found a link to the guy who makes them in the States, and I mailed him if he's still in business, because the last sort of video was um, about three or four years ago, something like that, and what with the COVID and everything, I thought maybe he's gone out of business. But um, I mailed him, and I waited three or four days, nothing got back, so I thought, oh, well, that's it. And all of a sudden, I got a, a mail from him. Uh, his name's Ma Mario. Um, and he was quite helpful, and he said, no, we're still in business, we make them, and they sort of build their kits, uh, if you order one, they sort of build it to order, so I had to wait a little while, and for some reason in the post, it got held up for ages, um, but say, so it came yesterday, uh, it's in a tiny box, which I can't believe, you know, that it, I know the auto dryer is small, but uh, in a little box like this, but... We'll open it and, and see see what it's called, uh, what we've got inside. Um, the company makes them are called MIA Microflight. And this model here is the EZTM Gyro 1. And this is the version 220. So it's got quite a unique way of the head steers and, and stuff like that. So let's just move my tea and we'll just see what we've got in the box. Oops, me lost my knife. bit of the uh, bubble wrap. Well, there's nothing in the box. <laughs> there's nothing else. So, uh, is there an auto gyro in here, you think? <laughs> well, there it is, guys. That's, that's the size of the package. Now, this is um, a full kit. 
with all the electrics as well. It's got toolkit, landing gear, uh, mast, base assembly, motor mount, seat support, servo plates, uh, seat frame assembly and install, rotor head, control block, rotor head assembly, rotor head manual. And this comes with the servos, I believe, with the optional electric kit, which is a motor and stuff like that. It's got all the rods. Uh, I believe it's got servos and a propeller uh, and stuff like that. So it's sort of quite nicely packed and, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to building it. Now, a lot of this stuff, you can see this, the motor. Um, I believe we've got the servos there. The Tower Pro, they're quite good. I've got them in the Drew of Fly, nine gram servos. But all this yellow stuff is 3D printed. So let's undo this bag and see what we've got inside. Maybe I should have got a sharper knife, maybe. Right. They've actually sent me the instructions online. I think I've got two sheets here, let's have a look. Oh, this is a... MI Flex Tool, General Purpose Sock Wrench It Press Fit Coupler Removal Tool. That looks quite an interesting thing. Um, all the instructions uh, I've been sent online. Um, it's just got like, a little picture of that on it. Uh, I can download it and can use that. So you can see how small this auto is by I think I showed you just now. I mean, that's off a, a Durafly. And these are the blades of the OEZ. The difference in size is, uh, is unbelievable. So that finishes there, and that's there. So they're quite a small blade. They look very well made. I think they're made of uh, like a hardwood. Uh, and you've got a clear covering. Um, Mario says you can actually cover them in a film or you can, um, they give you some clear heat shrink, which probably look nice. So I might use that. Got nice nuts and bolts. I believe there could be nylon, or they steel. I don't really know. So we've got the blades. Now what is this bit? Ah. So these parts here are the rear fin. Um, it hasn't got a rudder on it. It's kind of got this special head on it, which actually leans, tilts forward, backwards, kind of more like, if I show you the picture, you might be able to see it a bit better. Um, can you see this head here? Now that, you see it's got two rods going up, so it pulls it forward and backwards, and also you use an Elevon mix so you can rock it from side to side. So that should give you the controls. I mean, most of my other auto drivers have got an actual rudder. I think this might have a rudder on it. I believe it has, yeah. But it hasn't got an elevator. So that's you do really need a, a rudder on auto gyro. It's like sort of flying a helicopter a bit. So this is probably one side. Again, nice 3D printed parts. Really nice quality finish on them parts. Absolutely not the usual 3D that I've seen of some people. This looks like a plough field. Um, right, so that's the elevator. I think it's made out of some kind of, is it foam? Yeah, it's quite a loose sort of foam. Uh, got a carbon rod in it, so that gives it, you know, additional stiffness, which I think you need. Now, what is this part? Ah, this is uh, the cowling, which you, um, it's made of the same material. I think it might be a polypropylene or something like that. But you've got marks there, and what you do is you bend around them marks there to get the shape of the cockpit, which will be kind of, it'll be this piece here. You bend that around to get that form. There's a little screen that goes on it. Uh, ultra light, I mean, <laughs> it doesn't weigh anything. Ultra, ultra light. Again, nice 3D printing parts. Oh, there's a screen. Um, 
obviously you've got to paint it. I, I, I found a, a place that's doing foam friendly paints, but I'm not sure. I think I can paint this with normal paint. I don't think it's a foam. I think it's something another material. But I'll get on to Mario and, and, and see what he says. He's, he's a easy guy to talk to. Um, there we go. All lab labelled up to the instructions. We've got linkages. Yellow again. Very nice. I guess this is more parts of the seat. Well, oh, that's right. It's a seat. Done exactly the same. You just bend it round uh, where they've got the pre pre cut line, the perforated line, and you just you just bend it around there. So quite nice. Feels like it's going to be quite impact resistance, quite strong. All right, here we have the undercarry set. It looks quite nice, nice little wheels. Um, it's got a steerable front wheel, uh, which is cool. Whether it take off my flying field, because the grass at the moment is quite long, but uh, you can hand launch them, so it's not a problem. More linkages, all carbon. Nice, uh, look like servo mounts, nicely printed. Again, linkage parts, all numbered up, so you know what you're looking for. Number 15. Oh, and here's that multi purpose tool, which is uh, probably going to come in handy. Um, lots of different sizes on there. It'd be quite interesting. Now, the bones of this helicopter, the mainframe, is made out of Durrell Alley, really nice quality alley, uh, which is nice, it's not wood. Uh, we've got more 3D parts in there, all the screws. Um, yeah, that looks really nice. Very nice. You know, it should be quite robust because there's not a lot of weight to it, you know. I've got loaded in the past, it's the weight behind the mod models. If you've got something light, it's, uh, you know, nice. Right, now this one's labelled up. 8, 9, 10, 11. So these must be parts, but they look like the parts that go up and tilt the head from side to side. Um, you know, like that. So, that's that. Number three, which is more 3D printed parts. I don't know, they could be, it looks like the undercarriage mount there, where the wire goes through. they have got to be servo mounts, wouldn't you think? Definitely. Uh, and here we come to the rotor head. Um, I'm not sure how that goes together at the moment. Again, that's a nice sort of material. That looks like the material that uh, the seats and things are made of. But beautiful 3D printed, absolutely lovely. And it's got all their MIA logos on there. Very nice. Now I believe this is the very clever head assembly um, where it rots from side to side and back and back. So it's got like a swivel that goes in there. It's kind of a, like a CCPM mixing on a helicopter. So you've got it kind of going that way and coming back and you know, again, weighs nothing, absolutely nothing. Again, really nice quality, lovely thing. Uh, I'm really looking forward to putting this together. So now we come to the power system which is uh, all in a bag. Let's have a look and see what we've got in here. Okay. We've got four MG Metal Geared servos. Look quite nice. I think they're MG. Yeah, they're Metal Gear servers. Now, Tail Pro um, 
servos. Now, I've had a few off of eBay that are dirt cheap, like £5, with Tower Pro names on, um, and have been absolutely rubbish. And, you know, I've had a couple of them. They don't send, uh, they're absolutely rubbish. But I've been told by a friend of mine that they've been copied so many times. Um, but I've got some of these Tower Pro servos I've got here um, in another auto gyro, and they work fine. They're absolutely perfect. So, kind of, with the big ape scale um, servos, the Tower Pro ones, that they're just horrendous. I'd never buy them. But obviously, they've got to be clones because Tower Pro make quite good servos. And, you know, it's a shame that they've got clones um, and very inferior quality um, servos because these are really nice. They're metal geared, they work really smooth. So, they've got three of those. That's, that's all we need. This is your main power supply, tiny little motor. Let's see what it's got on it. Uh, it's 2,000, where are you? KV is 2,300. Uh, it runs counterclockwise. Um, what is it made by? It's Sky RC. So it's made by Sky RC, which is good. Very nice little motor. Nice little outrunner. And here we have probably one of the smallest ESCs I've ever seen in my life. Uh, you know, I'm used to running around with, you know, big stuff and big helicopters and, you know, 50 volt, 600 helicopters and stuff like that. And here we have the power pack. So we've got this 10 amp ESC. Don't know who was that made by. What, not really any idea. Got a little mini uh, XD on it. And uh, that's the power pack. So here we've got the power pack. And you can run it on, or oh, don't forget the propeller. And here we have a little propeller. Let's see if I can see what it is. Um, no, I can't see what size that is, but it's probably a generic sort of prop you can buy anywhere. Um, so, that's where we are with this model at the moment. I mean, it is very small. Um, you know, I've got to get used to working with little things like this because I've, I've not, you know, all my stuff is like massive. Um, but yeah, it looks cool. The size of them was, they're tiny, absolutely tiny. But again, you know, I don't know what the weight of this model is. If I, I'll have to look it up on, uh, you know, when I start building it. But, you know, it's supposed to, you know, make up quite a scale-looking model. And I expect when you've got three of them, it's going to give you a fair bit of lift. So, it'd probably be nice for my little field, you know. Um, it's a shame, really, because, you know, our flying field was, uh, was quite good in the past. But it's really, we fly up a football pitch and, you know, we seem to be the poor people over there. The football comes first and then you've got the archery and then we've got us. So, you know, it's not a good thing because other weekend, obviously, all the football's playing and it's really hard. You have to wait uh, on a weekend. I mean, it's not so bad for me because I'm retired so I can go over during the week. But most of my friends can only get over on a weekend, so... Uh, I try and meet up with them over the weekend and take a lot of my bits over there. But at the moment, um, you know, we've got football on and we've got rugby on and stuff like that. And um, you can't really fly, you know, when you've got all that going around you. So we have to wait um, and put up, you know. But, to, you know, in today's society, it's so hard to find anywhere to fly that we've got to just put up with it. Um, and I've gone mainly into helicopters now because, you know, I like them, uh, all the old school, nothing new really. Oh, I've got one new, um, like I said, 50 volt, 600 pro align helicopter, but it's given me lots of trouble with it. Um, I can't get it to fly very well. So my f first sort of fly bowler's helicopter, which I'm struggling with, but I'll do another video on that because I'm sure I'm going to fix it some way or the other. But um, like I say, the field's getting smaller, so... You know, I used to fly around with a big Aquawatt, uh, say, 100, you know, and I've had a few disasters. 
Um, and I just thought if the archery was down there, that it could have been, you know, go terribly wrong. So I'm sort of cutting down on them. Uh, flying with smaller models, helicopters, auto gyros. I've got some 3D planes that you can fly in a tiny area. I've got a PA Ultimate, which is one of my favourite planes. So um, when this came along, I just thought, well, that would be nice, you know, just to go up and down the field. Looks like it's, it flies. What I like about the auto gyros is you can fly them so slowly. Um, and it sort of defies the laws of gravity, really, uh, auto gyros, you know. It's, you've got to just think as those blades on the top, it's like a wing, really. It's like a flying disc. Uh, and it's really sort of grabbed my attention. So that's where we are with this one. Um, I'll wrap this video up now. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, it was quite expensive, but, I mean, it's virtually sort of handmade, isn't it? And the kit put together. And they only make them to order. So it's quite an expensive model, but it looks very good quality. And I'm hoping it's so light, it's going to be very robust. So that's what I'm looking forward to. So anyway, guys, going to sign out and uh, I'll see you in the next one.